Well, folks, I tell you what, my phone has just been lit up with some good people today, and right now I got Jimmy Fortune on the phone. Well, good day to you, Jimmy. How are you today? Doing good, Bill. You doing okay? I'm doing wonderful, and, uh, you know, I, I was just telling you that I've been a fan of yours for, uh, I won't get into the years, but back <laughs> <laughs> when you were five years old when you first started singing with the Statter Brothers. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you still go, you're the only one of the original Statter still still on the road, is that right? Well, yeah, but I'm, I, the original Statter Brothers were Harold, Phil, Don, and Lou DeWitt. Right. Of course, I came in 1982. Yeah. And they actually started when I was born, 1955. So oh, okay. that'll give you well, a little bit of an idea when I mm-hmm. that when they first got together, I was just a twinkle in my daddy's eye, I reckon. But that's uh, true. I had no idea one day I would wind up with them, mm-hmm. with the yeah. South Of course, growing up in Virginia, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> and actually, Lou, I played music all over Virginia until I was 26, and playing in cover bands all over the place and mm-hmm. doing all kinds of music and. Uh, and then Lou DeWitt heard me. Uh, he he was the one who sang tenor for the Statler Brothers right. like 20 years before me. Mm-hmm. Uh, he heard me singing at a place up in Virginia called Wintergreen. It's an old ski resort up there. And uh, and whenever he got sick, he had Crohn's disease, and he was going to be out. He, My name was the first name out of his mouth. Uh, yeah. And wow. so, you know, a lot of God things happened in my mm-hmm. life to, to bring me to this point that I'm at today. Right. And uh, to have been in there, wind up being with the Statler Brothers for 21 mm-hmm. years after that. Mm-hmm. Of course, he passed away in 1990 from yeah. Crohn's disease. And mm-hmm. and I think that's why it worked, because everybody knew that I was coming in to help out. You know, I, was, I wasn't coming in to take somebody's place. I was coming in to help mm-hmm. out. And um, I never took his place. I just made a place for myself. Right. Well, it seemed we that all, way. Yeah, we all went into the Country Music Hall of Fame together and... Mm-hmm. and uh, I, I always told him. I said, if y'all go in without me, I said that's fine. I said you just go ahead and go and don't don't even think twice about it. And Harold looked at me and said, well, if you don't go in, we don't go in. I said, well, I appreciate oh, yeah. that, but uh, you know we uh, we all wind up in the Country Music Hall of Fame together. So yeah. um, you know that's things you can't plan on. It's just God things that happen in your life that you can't explain. That's true. You know, and, and you know it, the the Lord does do some some miraculous things. You never know what he has in store for you. That's the truth. Mm-hmm. You know, I look back at things even when I was doing the wrong thing sometimes mm-hmm. that you know he would he would bring me through it somehow and help me out of it and help me and put me in the right place that I was supposed to be in and uh and so these are these are things again that I look back on things mm-hmm. and go how did that happen? Right. And you know what I I attribute that to my mother's praying. My mother mm-hmm. prayed hard. For all of us kids, there was nine of us, and I was number seven. And she, number seven needed all the help he could get. I bet, way, right? yes. And so I still feel her prayers being answered right today. Mm-hmm, right. So mm-hmm. I always tell us that parents and mothers and fathers, that you know, if you if your children are are going by the wayside, well, just pray for them. Just keep praying. Let God take care of it. He'll bring them back to you. That's true. Well, you know, that's great. And, and, and I know T. Grimm had a song, and I think uh, he wanted me, you know, turn the wine into water. Uh, mm-hmm. I think he's told me that's kind of his personal testimony. And uh, he told me to ask you about that. So he said, y'all had recorded a gospel album, or he had, and you helped him with a gospel song, a couple of songs. Is that right? Yeah, Marty Rabin did a thing mm-hmm. where we were trying to raise. We were all, well. He was trying to raise money and did raise mm-hmm. money for a lot of churches all around the mm-hmm. world, like building churches in a, a lot of out of the way countries, these third world countries and everything, mm-hmm. where they didn't have churches and, and have a place to worship. And so we went um, with him and with uh, Trace Atkins, Marty mm-hmm. Rabin, T. Graham, and Brown, and myself. Uh, we recorded an album. Uh, had a lot of our songs on there that we had done and then uh songs that we also recorded together mm-hmm. like songs like working on a building we did that and we thought that was an appropriate song to really push that that project yes. mm-hmm. and so uh it i forget how I mean, they're still counting the churches that that mo- that money is going towards building um it was hundreds of churches all all over the all over the world isn't that amazing and, i mean it's just uh, fantastic and so it it came off really good and it's uh it's a i think it could be uh, if if some major station would pick it up and play it, I think it could be one of the one of the main uh, uh, one, one of the biggest albums we ever had anything to do with. Yeah. Well, give me a copy of it. And I'll I'll see what I can do. Uh, All right. Especially okay. you know, I mean, uh, yeah. now I'm going to talk to you about Saturday night. You're going to be playing with T. Graham uh, up at the Georgia Mountain Fairgrounds in Hiawassee, and we're all mm-hmm. looking forward to that. Now I want to ask you a question of all. Uh, 
and, and I know you've got you. One of our most requested songs here still is, is If You Were Mine. <laughs> I mean, that song, for some reason, just, just took off. People started requesting it. And, and what you know, a lot of, I've had people that, that guy sounds familiar. And I sit back and I say, well, let me tell you something about Jimmy Fortune. <laughs> no, you're kidding. No, yeah. But, uh, yeah. you know, I was a fan of Statler Brothers. I'll be honest with you. I thought they were great. And, and you just mm-hmm. added your voice and... Uh, to it, and of course, you 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 sang the lead on quite a few songs. Uh, did you write and uh, Elizabeth? By the way, yeah, Elizabeth was the first song that I ever wrote. Um, mm-hmm. I never had written before. I was with the Statler Brothers, and I I never had time to because I was working six nights a week, four hours a night. I had two daytime jobs. I was I was really burning the candle at both ends, and uh, so again. Um, I went to Harold Field and Don and said, guys, if you, if I, if I were to write a song, would you guys record it? <laughs> and Harold gave me the most honest answer anybody could ever give. He said, he said, well, little buddy, if you write a song, if it's good enough, yeah, we'll record it. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's honest so, about it. Yeah. Yeah. So Elizabeth was the first song, song I took into him, like literally the next day. Gosh. And, uh, they heard it and they said, well, my gosh, we love it. So it's mm-hmm. going on our first album. Yeah. And it was the number one song, was yeah. song of the year, 1984. I thought so. Um, I knew it was one of their biggest, really. Because, you, you you know, that 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 tells you something right there. Because that was one of their biggest songs. And they had so many. I mean, it's just amazing. Yeah, they had a ton of songs. And they had a lot of, lot of top ten songs mm-hmm. that just yeah. were huge. Mm-hmm. Really did. Uh, and over the years. And mm-hmm. then... Uh, and then, I, well, like I said, when I came in, it just I guess people were had their ears to the scene, trying to see what was going to happen, and so we were garnering a lot of attention right. about that time. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, so, you know, the Statter Brothers were, you know, one of the biggest acts uh, at that time yes. when I came in. And uh, so I really wanted to succeed. I wanted the, I wanted the Statter Brothers to succeed first, but then I wanted to have some success because mm-hmm. I knew that I was going to have to, step up to the plate and try to do something because this was an opportunity. Right. And so um, you have to take advantage of those Mm -hmm. opportunities. And and I know people are, you know, the the old term overnight success, that doesn't happen. But, uh, you know, Uh, there you were doing doing a lot of of work, and all of a sudden you found yourself with one of the top acts in the country. I mean, that's got to be kind of a, 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 in a way, a nerve-wracking thing, really. Well, it was. I'm writing a book now, a book about my life, and that, of course, is a big, big chapter about being with the Statter Brothers, how it all came about, and how literally one one day I'm in Virginia, in the mountains of Virginia, playing little clubs and stuff here and there, and trying to make a living, and uh, just really having a struggle and having a hard time, you know, and then all of a sudden, a group like the Statter Brothers comes along and picks me up, and literally the next week, I'm in the White House, and with President talking to President Reagan, and and I'm out doing award shows. I'm out doing shows like the Glenn Campbell Good Time Hour in mm-hmm. L.A. and standing there talking to him. Been watching him on TV most of my life, hearing his records, and then <laughs> um, going to see Gene Autry at his house mm-hmm. and visiting with him, and and going to an Angels game and sitting out there and by him and and all this stuff happened overnight. And I'm yeah. sitting there going, you know, how in the world did this happen? <laughs> and and so you just, it was happening so fast that I just kind of had to hang on. I just said, mm-hmm. well, you just got to take a day at a time and you deal with whatever's in front of you and you you try to do the best you can. And, uh, of course, it, it, singing tenor is basically all I had to do. I, and it was, it, it kind of came easy because they made it easy for yeah. me. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I knew that I could do that, but I also had to try to look at it and say, well, now I need to try to write to make a place for myself uh, mm. in this organization. Right. And and so later on, uh, after the Statter Brothers retired, uh, that's when I wrote uh, If You Were Mine, mm-hmm. uh, because I knew I had to have some good songs on this mm-hmm. very first CD that I put out. Mm-hmm. It was called When One Door Closes, because right. a big door was closing in my life. And, and, uh, and so that was where I was. The door had closed, but I was taking a hold to another door, and I was opening that door. And uh, and so, if you were mine, was a song that uh, uh, that I wrote. That really, I mean, it's a love song. It's got. Mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of the Eagles, so it's got a little bit of the Eagles touch on yeah. it, and mm-hmm. and that type of thing because uh, of these. All of a sudden, there were songs that I had that people that 
people that influenced me mm-hmm. uh, were coming out in my writing, you know. Right. I can and understand. so If You Were Mine is a really, I think it, I've always thought it was a great love song. Well, apparently a lot of other people think so too, because I, you know, I, we get we still get calls today, you know, at people want to hear the song, and 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 it's a great song. I think it, it, well, uh, it is a beautiful love song. Well, and then I'll have to put it in my show then Saturday. Then I wish you would. Point. There's a lot of people going to be waiting to hear that song, and of course, uh, do you do a lot? Do you do many of the old Statler Brothers songs? Oh yeah, I open my show up with uh, flowers on the wall. Mm-hmm. Um, Pay tribute to my brothers, which is on my new record. I have a new record mm-hmm. called uh, "Jimmy Fortune Sings the Classics." Mm-hmm. It's in Cracker Barrel. It's in uh, all the major markets out there now, and doing really, really well. Um, but I have a lot of those songs, uh, like uh, "Flowers on the Wall," and going back to the first song I ever heard on radio, which was Eddie Arnold "Make the World Go Away." Oh yeah, um, and then uh, "Crazy Arms" from Ray Price, and then also has some Eagle songs of uh, uh, John Denver. Uh, even a Beatles song on there called "Yesterday," which was a song that, that was a pretty song uh, that that affected me in my life and when I mm-hmm. growing up uh, in the '60s in Virginia. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, also, you know, Elizabeth, my only love, too much on my heart, more than a name on a wall. There's songs that I had that were number one songs with the Statler Brothers, and uh, uh, so I pay tribute to my brothers. I pay tribute to uh, the veterans. Mm-hmm. Uh, through songs like More Than a Name on a right. Wall because, mm-hmm. you know, it's close to veter- to uh, 4th of July. I'm celebrating our independence, so I pay tribute to our veterans. Uh, uh, More Than a Name on a Wall was a big song for mm-hmm. the Staten Brothers oh, back it was, in the yes. late 80s. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and a uh, song that I wrote, getting an idea going to uh, the wall in uh, Vietnam Memorial mm-hmm. in Washington, D.C., and hearing a mother standing there talking about her son. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, and so that was just, uh, that's where that came from. And it just, that's, I guess it's why it hits home to so yeah. many people. Oh, I'm sure you know? it would. It does. And uh, we play this. But I do you? pay tribute to my brothers. They, mm-hmm. they, they've done a lot for me. So uh, let's face it, I, I wouldn't be anywhere without them. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. But at the same time, you embrace where you've come from, but you also have to make, try to break new ground because the old world passing you by and there ain't nobody going to stay in one place for so long. That's you know? true. Well, Jimmy, I tell you what, I hate to cut this short, but I tell you what, I better shut up and play some music. I'll, I'll tell you what I'm going to try to do. I am, I'm either going to flip a coin here and either play Elizabeth or play If You Were Mine. Now, I'm well, just going to flip a coin. I might even, might even play both of them. You wouldn't there you mind. go. That's I pretty don't care. good. Okay. Well, look, I'll be over Saturday night. I'll try to get in and see you if it's possible. You and, better. You better come say hi to me. I'll shake your hand and hug uh, your neck and say thank you, buddy. All right, buddy. Well, I've been a fan of yours. And uh, you keep up the good work, and we'll see you Saturday night. Hiawassee, Georgia Mountain Fair. It's going to be a good show. God bless you. Appreciate you. Thank you, Jimmy.